Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thanks so much for stopping by. We hope you'll come back often and that you'll subscribe by hitting that little button below. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. It is just under 24 inches long and just under six inches wide. It's also finished on both sides. Love this one, it was a great find. I'm also going to be using this wall sticker that I got from the Dollar Tree. They have several different ones with several different sayings, but this is one I bought about a year and a half ago. I'm going to be using one sunflower. I chose the largest one that I could find in my collection, and I'm also going to be using a few of the leaves that came with it. I'm going to be using two of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. They are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. They come six to a package, but we will be using two. I'm going to be using some jute twine. I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but you can get it at the Dollar Tree. And finally, I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot glue. First thing I'm going to do is remove this hanger at the top. I will not be reusing that. And then I'm going to take one of the wooden planks and center it from top to bottom and come in about an inch and a half on the side and draw on the back of the piece so that I know where to put my glue. And then for the second one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw around it, center it from top to bottom and place it in about an inch and a half on the side. Then once I get that done, I'm just going to place down my wood glue, place down my piece, and then I'll use something heavy on it and let it dry. And then here I am doing the second side. I'm going to place a good amount of glue, and then I'll just place something heavy on top, and we'll let this dry for about three hours. And here's what it looks like so far. Mainly, I needed the one piece to cover up the star hole. For the other piece, I just want to keep it balanced. I don't want one end to slide down if I hang it in a different way. I decided I would take soda can tabs and bend them in the middle so that they stick out just a little bit. And then I'm using hot glue and I'm going to attach them to the back of the top of my piece, making sure on the one end to cover up the hole that is there. I'll explain a little about that later. I cut off two pieces of my twine that were about six feet, maybe a little more long. I'm going to place it through the soda can tab and then I'll glue it down. And once it's secured, I'm going to start wrapping it around the end of this piece, making sure each time to go through the soda can loop because that will do two things. It will secure that soda can tab even better to the piece, but also on the one end with the two holes, we're also going to be able to cover up those holes and we don't have to cut off this sign. When I get to the end, of course, I'm going to tie a knot and then also secure it with glue, and then we'll just cut off the excess string that we don't need. And there's what it looks like so far. Everything's nice and tidy. I'm going to take off my sunflower. I'm going to cut off the little shank at the back a little bit, place on some glue to make sure it stays in place. And then once it's dry, I'm going to place on quite a bit of glue, and I'm going to center it right over the star hole. And then I'm going to start placing my leaves around. I decided that I like to have in the extra color and it does make sure to cover up any places underneath. But also if you rotate your flower, which I did at the end, that also covers up all those little cutouts. And that's what it looks like so far. I just need to place down my sticker. And with that, this project is complete. Today we are spotlighting 20 of our best Fall Fest projects, including two new Autumn projects. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate you. If you are new here, we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like what you see, and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using this old wood piece that I found at Goodwill Outlet for 79 cents. 
I'm not sure what originally it was. I like that it has the hole in the top that I can hang it with and I love the indention and I think we can use it for a sign. Some Waverly chalk paint in ivory, this metal pumpkin that I got from Dollar General for a dollar, one of these leather tags that I got from Hobby Lobby. You get three in a pack for $3.99, but all the fall stuff is on sale for 40% off right now. Some fall flowers and leaves and berries that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. My heavy duty staple gun, my glue gun and some glue sticks and not seen some fix all adhesive from Dollar Tree. So I love finding these pieces at the thrift store I didn't know what this one originally was, but if you look at things with a different eye, you can normally figure out what you could do with them to give them new life, do something else with them. So for this one, I decided I was going to make a sign and I wanted to freshen it up. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in ivory and I gave it a really good coat on the front, the back and the sides and I set it aside and let it dry. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to use my sanding block and just go over and give it a good distressing. Y'all know I love that farmhouse look. I like for it to look old and worn. So I hit all those edges and took off quite a bit of the paint, but you do this to your taste. Now I'm going to take that metal pumpkin and I wanted to remove that stand that was on there and it was not easy to get off. I had to twist it and pull at it and I was finally able to break it off. And then I decided where I wanted it to be on my sign and I used some hot glue to secure it. Now I do find out that my hot glue is not going to hold this metal and I do have to come back and add some fix all adhesive to secure it well. Now I'm going to take my leaves that I got from the Dollar Tree and I like to cut them apart and just kind of lay it out and get a feel for how I want things to look. Now this is where I <laughs> saw that it wasn't going to stay with just that hot glue and I had to put some fix all adhesive in there and add some weight on it to hold it down until it set. Now we're going to take some of those little red flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree as well, add a couple of my little sprigs of berries there on top, and then I think I'm going to use one of these large crimson flowers in the middle. Now I'm going to take my pieces and I want to trim them down because I don't want you to be able to see those limbs sticking out the top once it's all put together. And once I got everything trimmed down, I just took my heavy duty staple gun and I stapled it down. This is going to hold this perfectly. Now I'm going to also staple down that leather tag there. I want it to kind of hang down so that you can see that it says grateful. And then I'm going to trim up the florals for the other side of my sign and I'll staple them down to the top as well. Now the last thing I need to do is arrange things around, take my two large crimson flowers, cut off the bottom and use some hot glue to secure it. And with that, this simple project is finished. It's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these shovels that I got recently at the Dollar Tree. Three one-gallon paint stirrer sticks, some zip ties, some scrap foam from a package I received. If you don't have this, you can always use floral foam from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two bunches of these sunflowers. They came from the Dollar Tree some faux boxwood that I got at Walmart, this beautiful sunflower ribbon. It is wired. It's two and a half inches wide and it came from Hobby Lobby. Some Mod Podge, some chalk paint in the color Cashew, some acrylic paint in the color King's Gold, some chalk paint in the color Truffle, and of course my hot glue gun, a zip tie, and a chenille stamp. The first thing I did to my shovel was I covered the entire thing, the sides, the front, the back, with Mod Podge. I did this so it would take the paint more easily. And after the Mod Podge was completely dry, I came in with a coat of cashew chalk paint and I painted the entire shovel, front, back, everything, 
with one coat. And once that was dry, I came in and just painted the bottom part in this yellow paint, which is called King's Gold. It makes it like a dark, mustardy yellow, and I just love this one, y'all. And now I'm going to take three painter sticks, and I'm going to cut all three of them at seven inches. I'm just using my utility knife, and I'll use my wire cutters to clean up those edges. And I'm going to use some wood glue and glue them together side by side. I'll put two together, and then I'll use one of these craft sticks that I'll glue on top to make sure they stay together. And then I'm going to set it aside and let it dry completely. While that's drying, let's go in and paint the handle to our shovel. I'm using this truffle brown, and I'm going to paint the front and the back. Now that my little wooden platform has dried, I'm going to take my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, and I'm going to punch two holes in each end of it. Now I'm going to take a couple of zip ties, and I'm going to thread them through the holes that I made in my little wooden platform. I'm going to use these zip ties to attach this platform to the front of my shovel. I'll just pull them tight in the back, get them exactly where I want them, and then I'll cut off the excess with my wire cutters. I cut my scrap foam to the size of my platform, and now I'm just going to use a little hot glue, and I'm going to attach it right there on the base. And now I'm going to prepare my florals. I'm going to push the leaves to the end towards the bloom, and then I will cut all of them off, and they'll be ready to use in my piece. And now I want to make a bow for my piece. I'm going to use this two and a half inch wide ribbon, and I'm going to use my easy bow. And I'm going to make three inch loops on each side. and then one extra loop in the middle, and I'm doing six inch tails. Now I'm going to use a zip tie and take it right under that extra loop to hide it, and then I'll pull it tight, and then cut off the excess, give it a good fluffing, dovetail the ends, and there's our completed bow. Now I'm going to go in and start poking posies. That's just what I call it because I'm not a florist. I just kind of poke things in until I get my foam covered and I get it pleasing to the eye. I'm going to take my bow and I forgot to put a wire in there, wouldn't you know? So I took some thick floral wire and I'm twisting it tight to make it even thicker. And I'm using a little hot glue on my foam and then I'll just push my bow into my styrofoam. And now let's continue decorating this piece. I'm going to use that boxwood greenery. I'm going to use several more of those sunflowers. And I just keep poking things in till I get it exactly like I want it. I love how this piece came out. It turned out exactly like I had in my head. I love sunflowers going into fall. Quite a transitional flower. And they, this yellow adds lots of impact. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this jack-o'-lantern bucket that I got from Walmart for 97 cent. You can see that I tried to cover in the face of this. I was gonna use it for another project, but I have no patience and I lost patience with it, so I discarded it, but I thought it would be perfect for this. This placemat from the Dollar Tree, some floral foam, some fall picks from the Dollar Tree, some rocks these are from the dollar tree but you could use any rocks a sign from the dollar tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks so the first thing i did was unravel my placemat all you have to do is clip the stitches on this and it comes apart really easily this is very similar to the straw hats that we used back in the spring now i'm going to take that ribbon and i want to attach it to my bucket I'm using hot glue and this sticks really well, but I do want to give you a word of caution. Y'all be careful with this. This is an open weave fabric and this glue will come right through here. And if your glue gun gets really hot, you could get a really bad burn. Now, I tried to be a good girl and use my little silicone spatula thing with this, but 
truthfully, my glue gun doesn't get as hot as some does, and my fingers are kind of tough. So what I ended up doing was I would put down a row of hot glue and let it sit for a second, and then I would just kind of tap, tap, tap it around, and I ended up not getting burned. But I do want you to be careful. I don't want anyone getting a severe burn from this. Now, you do not have to worry about covering the face of your pumpkin like I did on this one. As I said earlier, I was going to use this for a different project and it didn't work out. So that's why mine is covered. This ribbon stuff here covers it completely. So you do not have to worry about that. The further you go down, you're going to get full coverage. If you can't find one of these placemats at your Dollar Tree, you could use a straw hat like we used from the Dollar Tree. I find these at the thrift store all the time and they come apart the same way and I think that would look really cool or even some burlap strips. You could cut some burlap strips and glue those around as well. We're going to keep going until we get to the bottom of our pumpkin. And then once I got down there to the end, I made sure that I finished it right at that ridge because I wanted this to sit flat and I knew if I went any further that it wouldn't sit. Now we're just going to put our floral foam in there. I put some hot glue down in the bottom and put that little circle. And then I put some hot glue on this square part and stick it down on top of that. Now I'm going to put some rocks in there and this is just going to give it some weight to keep it from tipping over. I like this sign, but my original thought was that I was going to paint it. I was going to put like, welcome to our patch or something like that on there. But the more I looked at it, the more I really liked it. These colors are really trending this fall and I thought that they went perfectly with this project. So I took one of my furniture repair markers and I just kind of went around these edges and filled them in. So they didn't look so much like cardboard. To me, that cardboard looks cheap, but when you fill it in, it makes it look more like wood does. Not only did I go around these edges, I kind of went up on the edges of the paper too, and this stains it and gives it a distressed look. Then we're just gonna stick our sign down into our bucket. Now we're going to change angles so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I was afraid if I kept recording from above that you wouldn't be able to see all of it. Now, truthfully, when I put my florals into my arrangements, I like to cut them apart. But this bucket is really deep and I didn't have any more floral foam. And when I cut these apart, they just kind of fell down in there. They weren't long enough. So what I ended up doing was just spreading out the branches on all of this. And then I would stick them in there and kind of weave them around so that I had different pieces in different places. In some cases, I would even pop the head off of one plant and pop it onto another just so that I could move it around. Now, I'm not a florist. I tell you guys this all the time. All I do is what Kay calls poking posies. I just poke things in until I like how it looks. Once we get all these in, we are finished. y'all it's Kay for this project is going to be a quick and simple item for my mantle I'm going to be using one of these stickers that I got at Target they come in a pack of two for three dollars they are vinyl and a beautiful copper color I am going to be using one of these 8 by 10 canvases from the Dollar Tree I will also be using some antiquing wax and some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun and that's it so the first thing we have to do is get this canvas off of the frame and I'm going to use a utility knife and score it and then I pull it and I used a screwdriver to also pry up some of the corners. I have used these before and they weren't stuck down quite as good as this one but this one was put down really well y'all. They had really stretched it out but that's okay. I'm stubborn and I kept on till I got it off of there. And the next thing I'm going to do is just use my scissors and cut off the edges. You will have to cut it just inside that fold line to make sure it fits the frame again. 
I cut my little vinyl decal into two parts because it was easier to handle it that way with using transfer tape. And I pulled this transfer tape out of my collection. It was quite sticky. It probably, in retrospect, would be better to use one that was a little less sticky, but hey, that's what I had and so that's what I used. And once I get them trimmed up, then I'm going to peel off the backing and make sure the letters are stuck to my transfer tape. And that's all there is to that process. And you can use a little squeegee or some kind of spatula or a credit card and scrape that right down on there. And then I'm going to apply it to my canvas. Notice I'm using the back side of the canvas. I'm not using that white shiny side. I'm using the side that looks pretty much like linen. And it took some time because this is just general sticky on the back and it's final but I do work through it and get it down to the canvas. And when I opened it up, I couldn't believe it was that beautiful copper color, y'all. Now I'm putting on the bottom part the same way. And I took my time and took that off. Poof, it's done. Now I'm giving it a good coat of Mod Podge on the outside. I start with the letters first, and then I'll come back and get a coat of Mod Podge on the entire piece of canvas. And it started rolling up on me, but I fixed that in just a minute and put some clips from the Dollar Tree on each corner. And we'll just let that dry overnight. And now I'm just going to take my frame and some of this antiquing wax, and I'm going to stain all of the outside edges and all of the inside edges and the front of my frame. This wax is wonderful because it has no odor and it is very user friendly. I'm just using a baby wipe to put it on and then I just washed it off my hands. No problem, easy peasy. And there it is, I'm taking off the clips. That worked actually really well. I'm just going to use a little hot glue now and attach my frame back to the canvas. Or I guess you could say the canvas to the frame because I'm doing it in reverse there. Now if you had a heavy duty stapler gun, you could do this a lot quicker and use your staple gun. I have one, couldn't find my staples. And I am happy to report that that final worked perfectly. Once you added a little Mod Podge, it is stuck to that frame and has no issue coming off. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these cloach domes from the Dollar Tree, this candlestick from the Dollar Tree, some small pumpkins. These did come from the Dollar Tree. They were in different packs and on some picks, I think. Some Waverly chalk paint in plaster and some Apple Barrel acrylic paint in Key West. I didn't use the silver. Some decorative moss. Some ribbon. This came from Hobby Lobby, but they have something similar at the Dollar Tree. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I love the color of that candlestick that I found at the Dollar Tree and I wanted to paint the bottom part of my cloche to match it. I took some of my plaster chalk paint and poured it out onto my paper and then I mixed in some of that Apple Barrel Key West color paint until I got a color that was almost identical. Then I just painted the bottom part of my cloche. Now this is plastic so it did take two coats to get a good coverage and I did the top and the bottom. I'm also going to paint the smallest pumpkin that I had. I didn't like that bright orange color and I wanted to be able to incorporate this blue that is trending this year into my pumpkins as well. Now we are going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to just go over my little cloche bottom. If you rub on this, it takes off part of your paint and it gives it a beautiful distressed look. I just kept going around it until I was satisfied with how that looked. 
Now I'm going to take that Jot Permanent Marker and I'm going to distress my candlestick as well. I want this to kind of match the bottom part of my cloche so that it looks like it went together. I make sure to get this on those ridges and I didn't put a lot I would just kind of lightly go over it and at points I would take my little baby wipe and go over it and kind of blend it in until I liked how it looked. Now I want to glue this on here but it has that little nub sticking out so I had to flip the candlestick over where it had a hole. That's okay I liked how it looked anyway. We're going to put some hot glue on the bottom of this and then we'll just stick the bottom part of our cloche on there and glue it down. Now I'm going to take a pencil and give my pumpkins just a little more detail, something more than just a flat look. So I just kind of run it into the ridges of those just to make them pop out. And on that glittered one, I ended up having to use a um, permanent marker to make that work. I put some hot glue down on the base of my cloche and then I took some of that decorative moss and just went right there around the edges gluing it down. Now we'll take our little pumpkins and start stacking them. I put my glittered one down first and then I glued the cream one on top of that and I left those stems on there because they stick up into the one above it and it helps give it some more um, strength. For the stem on this, I went outside and found a little stick and broke a piece off and glued it right there into the top of it. Now I'm going to take some of that moss and I'm going to glue it right in between those pumpkins. I wanted to give this a little bit of something extra so it didn't just look like I took three pumpkins and glued them together. This way I think it makes it look like it was more meant to be. Now we'll just pop our cloche back on top of this and then I cut a piece of ribbon and I tie it into a shoestring bow right around the base of my candlestick holder. We'll trim off those ends and we're finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wreaths that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's a bamboo wreath and the wonkier the better is just fine for this project. I'm going to be using a little bit of a fabric remnant that I got last year at Hobby Lobby. One of these wood stems, I got this package at the Dollar Tree. Some of this mesh tubing that looks like jute twine, I got it at the Dollar Tree. This would also be a good time to use that wired jute as well. Some wired ribbon to make a bow. I'm using my favorite fall colors, which are denim and an orange as well. And finally, my hot glue gun a zip tie, and also a chenille stem. So the first thing I did was, of course, take the tag off, and then I made a selection for the stem for my pumpkin. And then I came in with a nail, and I'm going to nail a nail right into the end of my stem. This will just give it better adherence when I glue it into the top of my wreath there. It really gives that glue something to hang on to. And the next thing to do is to glue the back side of this wreath down to the right side of my fabric. I'm going to do a rough cut and cut off my fabric into a square so it's easier to work with. And I'll get it pulled nice and tight. And then I'm going to come back and trim off the back once the glue has set nicely. Cut off about 18 inches of that mesh tubing. And then I decided to cut it in half and just tie it on to the sides of my pumpkin. Later on, I'm going to come back and add another piece on each side. I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker and make a six inch bow using three inch loops and about four inch tails. If you want to see this in slow motion, go back and look at Craft Chat this past Saturday and I actually explained step by step what I did to make this bow. Now I'm coming in with the second color and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before, but I am still doing one loop down, one loop up, one tail down, one tail up. And then finally I'm coming in with my signature ribbon and basically doing the same thing I did with the first orange ribbon. And 
and then I'm going to come in with a zip tie and start placing it right around the center. And then I'm going to turn it over on the back and before I tighten it, I put in a chenille stem, pull it tight, cut off the excess, and of course, every bow needs a lot of fluffing. And for this one, I do go in and cut those tails off a little bit more and I'm going to dovetail them as well. And that's my finished piece. And then I'm just going to attach my bow to the top of my wreath at the bottom of the stem using the chenille stem that we clipped into the bow. And once we twist that around, we're going to secure it with a little hot glue. And then for a final step, I'm going to come in and twist it into an O. And that's the way we will hang our wreath on the door. And now I decided I need to add a little bit more of that mesh tubing so that I have two sticking out to the side. And there's our finished piece. I cannot wait to decorate for fall. It is my favorite season, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a terracotta pot and saucer from Walmart, a candle from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in truffle and pumpkin, and some apple barrel acrylic in beachcomber beige, a black permanent marker from Dollar Tree, and I also used a white gel pen, some pine cones from my yard, some florals from the Dollar Tree, some pumpkin picks from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is paint our pieces so that they can dry. I'm painting the bottom part of my pot with that acrylic paint in beachcomber beige. You can use any tan color that you want to use for this. And I did only have to use one thick coat. Then I used my Waverly chalk paint in truffle. You could also use acrylic for this if you have a dark brown. And I painted my saucer on the top and the bottom. And then I went back to my little pot and I painted the rim with that as well and set it all aside to dry. Once my pieces are dry, I took my pencil and I just kind of freehanded a scarecrow face on this. Now, I wasn't worried about this being perfect. Scarecrow faces are not perfect. So I just kind of drew one on there. You're going to be fine with this. You could also Google one and trace it if you're scared of it. Then I took my jot permanent marker and I filled in my mouth and the eyes and see you can tell that I'm not even really staying in the lines that I drew. Those were just kind of a guide for me. Once I got my eyes and my mouth filled in, I took some of my orange pumpkin paint from Waverly and filled in the nose. And then I used a white gel marker to give my eyes some expression. I just did these little half moon things at the bottom. And then I did some little semicolons up at the top. You could also use paint for this if you don't have a gel pen. Now I'm going to use a little black marker and do some hatch marks on the nose to make it look like it was sewn. Now we'll use some hot glue on the top of our pot and then put our saucer right on top and this glues it all together. I'm going to put my candle on there. I'm going to pull a few of my flowers off of this little pick that I got from the Dollar Tree and stick those on there. Then I arrange my little pine cones on there. And lastly, I'm going to take some of those little pumpkin picks and I pull the pumpkins off of the little picks and stick those on there. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using these boxes that I got from the Dollar Tree. This is actually the outside of the boxes. They had an insert and I used those back in July for a 4th of July project. So now I'm using the part that was left. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the colors ivory, moss, and pumpkin. 
I'm going to use one of these maple leaves from the Dollar Tree, three of these wood stems from the Dollar Tree, some scrapbook paper that I got from Target, and finally some wire jute and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint each of my three boxes. I'm going to paint one in the plaster color, one in the pumpkin color, and one in the green color. I'm not going to paint the inside. I'm just going to paint the four sides and the top. I got a lot smarter when I painted the second and the third one because I realized I needed to put my hand inside the box and then I could just easily rotate it around and paint with no problem at all. My chalk paint was really thick so it only took one coat and then I just set these aside to dry. I went through my scrapbook pad and I came up with these three sheets to put on one side of my pumpkin. I'm going to use the scrapbook paper to actually cover up the holes on the side of the pumpkin and it will give me two looks as well. So I just took a pencil and I'm going to trace around it once I decided what I wanted to use on each box because these are a little, well, not square because they're very cheap and come from the Dollar Tree. So I wanted to make sure I got them exactly like I wanted it. And so I'm just going to come in with my scissors and cut out all three squares. Now it's time to Mod Podge them on. I'm just going to get a nice even coat and then I'll just smooth that down and then give it a top coat with the excess that was already on my brush. Here I am doing the second one. And now we'll do this green one, making sure that I turn my paper where the words will be able to be read when I turn it around. And so we'll coat it on top as well. And there we have the three looks with our scrapbook paper. Now I'm going to apply the stems to the top of my boxes. These stems have a lot of character because they're a little rough. Now I'm going in with that wire jute and I'm going to curl it around my pencil and get three pieces to go one on each pumpkin. And I'm just going to secure those to the top with a little hot glue. And after that is done, I'm going to take one of those silk leaves and I'm going to cut it into four pieces and I'm going to use that on my pumpkins as well. And of course, I'll just use a little hot glue and that should dress it up a little bit more and give it more of that pumpkin look. I love when I can use every piece of a project and I don't have to throw anything away. And this gives you several different looks. You can turn the pumpkins to different sides. Happy fall, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old palette sign that I made out of five gallon paint stirrer sticks. Um, this is one I had from another project. I sanded it down and repainted it so that I could use it again. They are really easy to make and we have done it in several videos. I will put a link to one down below in case you would like to make one yourself. This bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree a fall leaf left over from another project, a piece of stick from my yard, some berry garland, I got this from Hobby Lobby, but they have some similar at Dollar Tree, various ribbons from my stash, I think most of these came from Dollar Tree, some raffia, some super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So we are going to be using an old sign. I like to repurpose these whenever I can, but I will put a link down below if you need to make one yourself. Now I did sand this down and repaint it, but I want it to be distressed. And my favorite way of distressing is to just use a pencil. This is just a regular old graphite pencil. I run it over those um, gaps there where my boards meet. Um, and then I just kind of smear it in with my finger. This gives it a beautiful distressed look. It looks like it's been left outside or handled a lot. It smears it in and it becomes soft. So you don't have some of those um, hard lines like you get sometimes with paint. It's also a lot easier to control. 
Now we're going to take this bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree and I cut off the tags and then I just kind of squish it up some to give it the shape that I wanted. And I'm going to take some of my Fix All Adhesive and put it in different areas on here and then fill in the other areas with hot glue. This is going to give me that fast hold, strong hold effect. Now I'm just going to pile up some books on top of this so that it can set and be held down while it's doing it. And then I'm going to take that stick and put some glue, same way, the Fix All Adhesive and the hot glue. And I'm going to put it there on the top and then leave this to dry for about an hour. Now let's decorate our pumpkin. I'm going to take one of these fall leaves. I had this left from another project. Y'all know I've been using them a lot. I put a little bit of hot glue on it and then just kind of tuck it down behind my wreath. I put one more little drop on it to hold it in place and that's good for that. Now we're going to make a messy bow. I've measured out how long I thought it needed to be and then I'm going to take my ribbons and cut them all down about the same size. Now for these thicker ribbons, they have wire in the edge and I did take the wire out because I want this to have more of a floppy look than a structured look and then I dovetail the ends of my really thick ribbons. Now I'm going to cut two of each of the ribbons I pulled. I think I pulled like six of them, but you know, you pull what you want, the colors you like, and how many you think you need to give you a full bow. Now for this polka dot ribbon here, I did the same thing. I took that, rib, uh, that wire out of the edge of this, and then I dovetailed the ends. And on these little ones, I just cut them at an angle instead of trying to dovetail them. Now we're going to stack them up, and you see that I'm just crisscrossing them as I go up. I'm going to take some of my raffia. I cut off a little bunch of it and put it there in the middle. And then I took a little piece of this berry garland, and I wrap it around my pencil just to give it some little you know twisties give it some interest and I'm going to cut two long pieces of this lace ribbon that I get from the Dollar Tree I'm going to wrap it right there around the middle of my bow and then I'm going to tie it into a double knot and I'm going to leave those tails hanging down long this is going to kind of give you the feel of the tails on a bow we're going to fluff it up real good and then we're going to use some glue and glue it right there to the top and we'll be finished It's Kay. So today we're continuing Fall Fest, but it is the Fab Five and our challenge item is to use a picture frame. So I found this picture frame that has two parts that are hinged in the middle that I got at the thrift store for 99 cents. I will be using one of these glass candlesticks that I got at the Dollar Tree. One of these wooden words that I got in a package at Target for $1. One of these wooden pumpkins, these also came in a package from Target for a dollar. Some of these wooden beads that I got at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. One wooden gift tag, I got mine at Walmart in a package. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. Some antiquing wax. A small piece of scrapbook paper, this came from Target in the dollar spot some caulking from the Dollar Tree, some craft sticks, two really tiny screw eyes, some Mod Podge, some wood glue or Elmer's glue, and finally some nylon cording. That was a long list, y'all. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this candlestick and give it a really good coat of Mod Podge. And you want to keep it as even as possible and leave it overnight to dry if you can. Now I'm taking this frame apart. I'm just going to remove the screws. I'm only going to be using one five by seven frame. And for now, I'm going to take out the glass and take out the backing, and I'm going to save those to reuse them. Now I'm just kind of fitting my project because I'm going to be attaching later the frame to this candlestick. And in the meantime, I'm going to place some of the caulking down in the candlestick and really filling that up. And I will tap out the air bubbles and then I'm going to place my craft stick down into the candlestick and let this dry overnight. You really want this to dry for about 24 hours. 
Basically, you just want to make sure that it sets firmly. I'm going to use my wood filler and fill in those holes where I remove the hinges. If your frame doesn't have hinges to remove, of course, you can skip this step. And of course, the next step I'm going to do is give my frame two really good coats of my ivory chalk paint. I'm going to paint the inside edges and all of the outside edges, and you could paint the back as well if you would like. And I'm going to paint my tag, my little wooden tag in the ivory chalk paint also. And then I painted my candlestick as well in the ivory chalk paint. I gave it two really nice thick coats and I let it dry in between. I took one of the wood pumpkins and I painted it in the orange pumpkin chalk paint. And then I just used my pencil to draw some lines on my pumpkin to give it some shading and some depth. I just smudge the lines with my fingers. If you get too much, you just erase some and then you can always add some in. Now I'm going to trace my wooden tag onto my scrapbook paper. I decided it just needed a little bit more color. Then I'll just go in and cut that out, of course. And I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers to go ahead and punch that hole in the top. And I'm just going to use Mod Podge to attach the scrapbook paper to this wooden tag. And once it's dry, I'm going to seal the top part of the tag with Mod Podge as well. And I also sealed the top of the pumpkin with Mod Podge. And I am attaching two of those little tiny screw eyes to the top part of my frame. I did have a tough time getting the second one started, but once I got them in, I did touch them up with the ivory chalk paint so that they would blend right into my frame. My candlestick, actually the paint kind of crackled and I love that. I wish the frame looked the same way. So next time I think I'll use some crackle medium on that as well. Now I'm using my antiquing wax and I'm just going to hit the highlights on my candlestick and I just used a Q-tip to put it on and I just rubbed off what I didn't like. You can add as much as you want or as little as you want. It's kind of whatever effect that you're going for. And then I used my wood glue and I attached the word grateful right down to my tag, making sure I didn't cover up the hole. So I put it at an angle you don't have to use wood glue. You could use your hot glue or you could even use Elmer's glue. And then I came in with my antiquing wax and of course I distressed my frame as well. I just hit the highlights on the outer areas mostly and the inner areas because I'm going to cover up most of this with my other elements. Then I tied my nylon cording to one of my screw eyes in the corner and then I'm going to lace on a bunch of my beads. I just did it until I was happy with it and it draped a little bit on the frame. And then I'm going to come in and tie it off at the second screw eye. These beads are going at the top. And then I added on four more screw eyes to dangle down the side. And of course, I'll just attach my tag to the end of my beads. I just looped it through the hole on the tag and then back through the first bead and tied it around between the first and the second bead at the end. Cut off the excess and I did use my lighter to burn the edges because it is nylon rope. And then I'm going to come in with a little hot glue and set that tag at a jaunty angle. And then I'll attach my pumpkin to the lower right hand corner. I'm going to add another craft stick at the top and I will glue it to the frame only on the black part so that I can change my picture out later. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Happy fall, y'all! We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pumpkin sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. A straw hat. I got mine from the Dollar Tree, but I see these all the time at the thrift store. Some fall leaves I had left over from other projects. I did get these all from the Dollar Tree. Some fall berries. Some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. A stocking footie from the Dollar Tree some batting but you can use anything for stuffing some twine 
and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I'm trying to use up some of these fall items that I have picked up since this is going to be our last fall video for this season. And one of the things I really wanted to make sure that I used so I didn't have to store was this pumpkin sign. I think that it'll be perfect for the project that I had in mind, but I did need to cut it down some. Since this is going to be a gnome, I needed to kind of make it more into a pointed fashion at the top. So I cut off the little bumps on the second pumpkin, and then I cut off the edges of the hat and kind of made it more pointed at the top. Once I had that done, I grabbed my sanding block and took off as much of that glitter as possible. Now we're going to work on the hat. I'm using this straw hat. I love to pick these up from the Dollar Tree, but if yours doesn't have these, I do see them at different thrift stores all the time. I cut up the back of this so it would open it up, and then I just start kind of forming it to the top of my sign. I use my hot glue to hold it down, and I would just press it down and then just keep cutting it off and pulling it together. I do want to have a little bit of a ruffle at the bottom of this, but I didn't want it to ruffle out as much as this hat really does so you see that I just keep cutting it down pulling it gluing it down and be careful if you're doing this because the hot glue does come through those little holes that's there and I just kept on till I was happy with my hat now we are going to start working on his beard I wanted to use up as many of these leaves as I could and I really didn't have a rhyme or reason for how I was doing this other than I knew I wanted them to all point down so that they would start forming into what I hoped would be a beard. I did want to put as many of the green ones on the bottom as possible. I wanted to have the colorful ones showing the most. And then when I got down to the bottom, I had this one leaf that I really loved that I thought just kind of pointed out that beard perfectly. So I put that down at the bottom and then I just kept filling in until I was happy with my gnome's beard. I'm only using hot glue to secure these and it worked out perfectly, but you could use any glue that you wanted. Now I'm going to cut a piece of my ribbon to decorate his hat. I wanted to give him a band and I love this burnt orange color ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I cut it down and just kept gluing it until it fit around the hat. It didn't really matter what the back looked like. And now I'm going to take another piece of this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree just to give it some contrast and kind of break up how big that bottom ribbon is. And I glued it around as well, tacking it there in the center. Now I'm going to use a leaf and some of those little berries and give it a little bit of decoration. I know y'all see that pumpkin nose that I have down there, but just ignore it. My idea was that the pumpkin would make the perfect little nose for him, but I wasn't really crazy about how it looked. So I took a picture and sent to Kay and to my sister and my sister was like, well, I think it's cute, but my niece, my niece is always honest. She said, what is wrong with his nose? And that just verified what I was feeling. So I grabbed one of those little stocking footings. I stuffed it with some of my batting. I used a rubber band on the back to close it up and then cut off the tail of it. Then I stripped off that little pumpkin, used some hot glue and glued it in there. And yep, this was so much better than that pumpkin was. The last thing we need to do is make a hanger. So I'm going to use some of my twine and a darning needle. I thread it through there and then I just take that needle and go through the holes in the hat pull it through, tie a knot in it, making a loop, trim off those ends, and this project's finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making a fall wood round. I'm going to use one of these 10 inch wood rounds that I got at Hobby Lobby in a pack of three. One of these wooden words that says blessed, they come in a pack of six for $3.99, but they were 40% off. These are some awesome wood words, y'all, from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use just a bit of this burlap that's just a remnant from last year's projects. 
I'm going to use some wired ribbon to make a bow. I ended up only using two. I did not use just the burlap color. Some Mod Podge. Some Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Cashew. Some Apple Barrel Paint in the color King's Gold. And it has a flat matte finish. A Furniture Repair Marker from the Dollar Tree. I'm using the color Oak. Some Sunflowers that I got at Walmart. Some eucalyptus that I also got at Walmart. And finally, my hot glue gun and a zip tie. The first thing I did was paint my entire circle, the front and the back and the edges, with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint. And once it was dry, I'm going to go in and draw across my board with my ruler a nice wide stripe, about four inches or so, just the perfect sides to place on our word blessed later. For the top part of our board, which is about 30% of the space, I'm going to use a coat of Mod Podge and then place down this scrap piece of burlap down onto my circle. And then I'll put a coat of Mod Podge on top as well. And then we're going to let that completely dry before we trim it off. And while that's drying, let's go ahead and stain the word blessed using that furniture repair marker that I got at the Dollar Tree. Y'all, these things are awesome. Trish turned me on to these, and they have no odor, which I love. Now I'm going to take a little tape, and I'm going to just run it along that line at the bottom. I ran out of washi tape, so I'm just going to use some blue painter's tape. Then I'm going to take just a little bit more of that cashew chalk paint and I'm going to paint along the edge of the tape and that way when I put on my second color, it won't bleed under the tape. I wanted the color at the bottom to be kind of a mustard yellow color and this was the perfect shade and it is a flat finish. I thought all of the apple barrel paint came in a shiny finish, but I was so wrong. I love how this turned out and really cheap. And when the Mod Podge is dry, that burlap becomes really stiff and really easy just to trim right off with our scissors. Now let's make a bow. I'm going to do six inch tails and three inch loops. First of all, I'm going to use this mustard colored ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to make two three inch loops on each side and finish up with a six inch tail at the bottom. For my second color, I'm using this ribbon from Hobby Lobby that has sunflowers on it. It's also wired, and I'm only doing one three inch loop on each side and a six inch tail on each side. Now we'll just fluff that out, cinch it up with a zip tie. And there's our bow. And we'll just cut off the excess of that zip tie with our wire cutters, come in, Dovetail those ends by folding in the middle and cutting to the outer edge. Fluff our bow, and there it is. Now I'm going to take that eucalyptus and some floral wire. I forgot to tell you about that earlier, and I'm just going to wire it all together. And then I'm taking a couple of those sunflowers, and I'm going to wire them in also to my swag, one on each side. And that's when I discovered, you know, my bow really needed some wire as well. So I did fish it through the back, some of that floral wire, so I can wire it right down to my swag. I decided glue would not be enough. You could do that ahead of time. Now I'm going to place my word blessed right there in the center. I'm just using a little wood glue to put it on because that's my favorite method. You can use hot glue if you would like. And I just put something heavy on it and I let it sit for a few minutes and it is perfect. Now I'm going to attach my flowers at the top with some hot glue. I'm going to take a tab out of this soda can, bend it a little bit in the middle, and then I will attach it to the back with some hot glue. Put a little hot glue around the edges and on top. And that's how I'm going to hang it on my wall. I love this one. It turned out exactly like I wanted it to. And there it is hanging on my door. Happy fall, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. 
For this project, I'm going to use this empty five hour energy drink container that I had on hand. Now you can use any container you want that is small enough to fit your hat on top of. A small piece of burlap, one of these scarecrow hats that I got from Hobby Lobby, they are on sale now. A piece of this microfiber mop from the Dollar Tree. A wooden button, but you could also use a bead. Some raffia. One of these wooden stickers from the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin and some acrylic paint in brown. And I also used a little green and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I went ahead and removed this plastic that was wrapped around this bottle. I am going to be covering it with my burlap, but I didn't want any of that to show through. Now we're just going to measure our burlap around our bottle and I pull out one of the strings. That gives me a straight cutting line and then I just trim it up. Now we're going to take our hot glue and attach our burlap to our bottle. I just put some right around the bottom around the top and then on the seams and this sealed it to it. Now be careful when you're working with hot glue and burlap because it can come through there and it can burn you. Now I'm going to cut off one of the corners of that microfiber mop. Y'all this is messy, not going to lie. And then I just kind of trim it up to make a beard for my gnome. Once I'm happy with how trim it is, I put a little bit of glue on the back of it and glue it right to the front of my bottle. I'll trim it up just a little more. And then I'm going to take some raffia and make some hay hair for my scarecrow gnome. All good scarecrows have hay hair, right? <laughs> I just gathered it up and cut off little pieces and then I glue it all the way around on top of this. Once I get all that on there, I put a little bit of glue inside of one of my hats and then push it right down on top of the hair. We're going to use one of these wooden beads for the nose. And then I decided to put a little bit of hot glue on each side of the hat so that it kind of framed around his nose. I'm going to use one of these pumpkin stickers that I got from Dollar Tree and I use my brown paint to paint the stem, a little bit of green for the leaves, and then I use that Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and paint the rest of the pumpkin. Then we'll just leave it to dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to use a pencil and just kind of sketch on some lines to give our pumpkin some definition. Then we'll use our hot glue on the back and glue it right to the front of this and with that, this project's complete. There's our finished Scarecrow Gnome. I think he's so stinking cute. He's a mini so you could easily put him on a tear tray or you could just use him next to one of your signs for your fall decoration. I'm going to probably be moving him all around the house. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this framed picture that I got from the thrift store, this wording that I got from Target Dollar Spot, half of a pumpkin I had left over from another project. This is the carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in truffle, plaster, and pumpkin, a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, some craft paper, or you could use a paper bag, some scrapbook paper, some Mod Podge, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was take the picture and the backing out of my frame and set those aside. We're going to use those, but I threw away the glass. We don't need that. Then I took my Waverly chalk paint and I gave my frame a really good coat of paint and let it dry. Now once it dried, it still looked a little streaky to me and I wanted it to have that nice finish. So I gave it one more coat and left it to dry. I wanted my frame to have a distressed look. Y'all know I love that. So I grabbed my sanding block and just started going all over it, taking off some of my paint. The part I really focused on though was that gorgeous detail that I wanted to pop out. 
Now we're going to take this wood wording from Target and I wanted to give it a deeper, richer color. I love using these little markers from the Dollar Tree. I think they stain perfectly. So I just went over each one staining it. And I also did the stem on my pumpkin. Now if you don't find this wording from the dollar uh, from Target, you can always get these wood letters from any craft store and I've even seen them at the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to take that little marker and I give my pumpkin some of those lines and then I take my pumpkin chalk paint and go over this and it all blends together and it looks like a real pumpkin. While I have that pumpkin chalk paint out, I decide to go ahead and give this half pumpkin a good coat of it as well. These pumpkins have that garish orange color which does not look like a natural pumpkin. But I think this Waverly chalk paint really tones it down and gives it more of a natural look. While my paint was still wet, I took my truffle chalk paint and a brush and I go into those little ridges on there. And since my paint was still wet, it all blended together and it really helped this to look more like a real pumpkin. Now we're going to make a stem. I took some of my craft paper and I just kind of twist it up so that I could have an idea of about how much I was going to need. And then I cut that off and untwist it, opening it back up flat. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and go over this, giving it a really good coat. You could use glue here, but I have found that Mod Podge actually works the best, but in a pinch, school glue would work as well. Once I get it covered with my Mod Podge, I just start rolling it up and then I start twisting. The more you twist and the tighter it gets, it's going to start curling around. Just be careful with that tip because it's easy to tear it off. Once I get it to a certain point, I start adding in some Mod Podge on the top of this and then I just keep twisting. Yeah, it does get all over your fingers, but that's okay. All crafters are messy, right? right it's not just me i hope <laughs> then i take that stem and i open up the bottom of it so that it'll sit flat and i use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to my pumpkin now i thought it still needed a little bit more stem there at the bottom so i took that piece that i had cut off there opened it back up and then stuck it down to the top of the pumpkin now we'll just use a little bit of mod podge and seal that all in and we have a nice stem I took that picture that came out of that frame and I completely covered it using my glue stick. This is just a glue stick from the Dollar Tree. Then I stuck my scrapbook paper down and smoothed it out. I laid my lettering and my pumpkin down so that I would have my spacing and I took a pencil and lightly wrote in open daily on one side and pick your own on the other side. Then I took these graphic illustration markers that I get from Hobby Lobby and I filled in my lettering. Now my scrapbook paper has some texture to it, otherwise I could have just used a sharpie for this, but the sharpies did not want to work on this textured paper. My graphic illustration markers work perfectly, but if you're using regular scrapbook paper you don't have to have those. Now we're going to put our backing back into our frame and put all those little tabs back down. Then we will take our letters and I'm going to use that little ruler guide that it has at the top and try to get these as straight as I can. Now you can see that I'm using my pumpkin in place of my U and these letters were really stuck to this plastic. When I tried to pull the M up, I did end up breaking it, but I was able to piece it back together and once I got it down, you really couldn't even tell it. Now we'll do the patch part. See, I told y'all these letters were stuck. <laughs> And then once we get that on there, we'll take our pumpkin, put a little bit of hot glue on there, and glue it down to the center. And with that, we are finished. At Crafty Cousins, you will always find a variety of crafts and styles on our channel. Trish loves wood projects and thrift flips, and I love paper projects and wreaths. 
but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, and much more. There is a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this thrift flip project, I'm going to be flipping this sign that looks a lot like somebody put their foot through it. Maybe they stepped on it, but I think we can reuse it and make it an interesting project. I'm going to be using one of these metal word signs that I got at the Dollar Tree. This is a larger size and they come one to a package, not three. I'm going to be using seven five gallon paint stirrer sticks some Waverly chalk paint in the colors ink and white, some gel stain from Hobby Lobby, a furniture repair marker in the color black. I got these at the Dollar Tree, some craft paper that I got from the Dollar Tree, and finally, an assortment of glues, my super glue fix-all adhesive, my super glue wood glue, and also some Elmer's glue all. So the first thing I'm going to do is start deconstructing this frame. I'm going to take this paper off the bag. I'm going to remove the hanger on the back, but save that, we'll reuse it. And I'm going to remove a ton of staples from this project. And eventually I decided to take out this background entirely. It was just too busted up to reuse. So I take my hammer and I give it a really good smashing and it comes right out the back. Now I'm going to stain my frame a little darker color. I'm going to use that gel stain and I'm going to stain all of the edges, basically anything that already had stain on it. And I'm using a baby wipe by the way, and I'm just rubbing that in. And once I'm done, I'm just going to set it aside and let it dry. I pre-cut all of my five gallon paint stirrers to the right size to fit inside the back of my frame. And then I'm using my furniture repair marker in the color black, and I'm just going to stain the small edges on each of the seven pieces. And then I'm going to come in with my white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the front of all of my paint stirrers. It only took one coat it gave really good coverage, so it was very quick. Then I'm taking the word family, this metal word, and I'm going to paint it in the black Waverly chalk paint. This took two coats to get really good coverage. And now I'm going to go in on the back part of my frame and I'm going to evenly space apart these seven paint stirrers. Yes, there will be some gaps in between, but we're going to take care of that. I'm going to place the glue on, get them like I want them, all lined up, and then I'll put something heavy on the top, and then we'll just let that set and dry until it's in really well. Now I'm going to go in with my Elmer's glue all, and I'm going to place a coat all the way around the back of my frame, and I'm going to place down this craft paper that I pre-cut to the size and that will clean up the back nicely and it'll look very professional. Now let's go in and replace our little hanger on the back. We're just screwing it now so that it will be a horizontal picture and not vertical. And that's what it looks like. I'm using my super glue fix all adhesive on the back of the word family. And I'm going to center that right in the middle of our frame. And then I'll again place something heavy on it and let it set overnight. And there's our finished piece. Very simple, very fun, but it's going to be a very fundamental part of my home. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, some branches that I took off of a bush in my yard. This actually came from a weeping willow tree, but you can use any thin flexible branches off of any bush you have. Some wording that I printed on my computer. I will put a link to it in the description box if you would like to have a copy. A leaf I had left over from another project. Some Waverly chalk paint in ivory. A furniture repair marker some paint markers. I got these from Amazon, but you can pick them up at any craft store. Some twine, some raffia, a berry garland from Hobby Lobby, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. 
So the first thing I did was take the backing out of this frame and it knocked a couple of those little metal pieces off, but I just held on to them and I'll replace them later. I took the two little flowers off and then I took as much of the paper off as I could get. Now this was really stubborn. I even used my heat gun and it still didn't want to come off. So I just got as much of it off as I could. Now I'm going to give my backing a good coat of paint. I'm using Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint. You can use any color that fits your decor. And I did end up giving it two coats. After the first coat dried, it still had a few places showing through, so I gave it another one. Now I want to darken up my frame. So I took one of those furniture repair markers that I love from the Dollar Tree, and I started trying to um, stain it but I soon figured out that this has a coating on it. It's almost like it's wrapped with the drawer liner stuff, almost like a vinyl, and my marker was just pulling up on top of it. So I grabbed a towel, and when I tried to wipe it off, I noticed that it actually kind of wipes it in, and it looks like old wood, and I really did like how that looked. So I decided to just go with it, and I did the whole frame this way. Now I want to transfer my wording to my project, so I flipped it over face down and I grabbed a pencil and I just start scribbling across the back of this. We did this as kids, you've all seen it before, I love transferring wording this way. Once I've scribbled on the back of it, I flip it over and I trace over my words and this transfers it to my project. Now, you could use graphite paper to do this same thing, and I do use that a lot, but it has a tendency to smear on your lighter projects, and when you do the pencil, you seem to have more control because it's in a smaller area, so this was what I decided to do. You could also just cut this out with vinyl if you have a cutting machine, or if you have good handwriting, you could totally freehand this. Once I get my letters transferred to my project, I take my orange paint pen and fill them in. Now, I did buy a whole pack of these paint pens from Amazon, but you can get just the color you want at any craft store. I know that Hobby Lobby and Michaels carries them. Um, you could use a Sharpie. They come in orange. Or you could just get one of the Jot Permanent Markers from the Dollar Tree and do this in black. I think that would look great as well. I just wanted to do something with a little bit of color because because I did so much in black last year and I am loving how this orange turned out. Now I'm gonna take this limb from my Weeping Willow Tree and I wrap it around about four times in a circle and cut it off and then I take a piece of that berry garland that I got from Hobby Lobby, it's over in their fall section and I cut off a piece and I just start wrapping it around those loops that I made. This is securing it together so that it doesn't come apart and it also gives it a little bit of decoration. I wanted a second one that I'm gonna kind of overlap so that it looks like one big pumpkin. So I did the same thing. I just took another piece of that limb and I wrapped it around and around and then I twisted that berry garland around it to secure it. Now, if you don't have a weeping willow tree, you know, I have other bushes in my yard that have thin branches on it that are real flexible. You could use those as well. Now we're gonna put our back back into our frame and I took a little bit of hot glue and put those pieces right back in there to help secure it. And then I'm gonna take those two little garlands, I guess, that I made, and I glue one of them down by putting glue all over the back. And then for the other one, I just put glue where it's gonna to touch, and I glued it down right on top of it so that it overlapped. Now I'm gonna take that leaf that I had, and I thought it was just too big, so I grabbed my scissors and cut it down to shape, or to size, I should say. And then I took that other limb that I got out of my yard and I just start cutting on it until I get it the size that I want it. And then I just use my hot glue to secure it to my picture. I glue down my stem and then I put my leaf right there at the bottom of it. I want to decorate this just a little more, so I grabbed some raffia and cut off a piece or a few pieces of it, and then I just tie it into a knot right in the center. I'm not really making a bow, but it kind of gives it that bow feel. Then I just kind of pull on those ends to, you know, make them a little more shabby, fill it out a little more. I trim that up, 
and get it ready to glue down. Now I'm going to take another couple pieces of that berry garland and I cut them off and twist them around just to kind of make it look like the little stems coming out and glue them to the base of my wood stem. And then we're going to take that raffia bow thing and glue it right on top of it. Now I want to make a hanger for this, so I took a piece of twine and cut it off. Then I took some of that leaf pieces that was left and cut them down. I tie a knot in each end of my twine and find the center of my frame. Then I just flood the end with hot glue, cover it with the leaf, and this secures it in place. And there's our finished piece. This one is so simple to make, but I really love it. I think it turned out really pretty with our orange letters, and I love those little pumpkins that we made from the limbs. I think this one is gonna be perfect for our fall decor. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. Hey y'all, it's Kay. I'm sad to say this is my last fall project for 2021. I'm going to be making a centerpiece for my Thanksgiving table. I'm going to be using one of these five gallon paint sticks. Some of this natural colored polypro mesh ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is 10 inches wide. And I will also be using some orange mesh ribbon that is five and a half inches wide. Some chenille stems and one zip tie. This two and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. This beautiful wired ribbon that I got at CraftOutlet.com. This orange burlap two and a half inch wide ribbon that I got at Walmart. This one and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. This natural colored mesh tubing that I got from the Dollar Tree. These pumpkins that I got from the thrift store recently, but I also saw some very similar at Target. Some assorted florals from the Dollar Tree. These pomegranates from the Dollar Tree. And finally, my heavy duty stapler and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was place a dot at one and a half inches in from the right and the left end of my paint stick. And then I placed a dot every three inches after that. So at one and a half and then four and a half and so on as I worked my way down the paint stick. So that gives us a total of seven dots. And so I'm going to take my chenille stems and I'm going to twist one around the back and just a couple of times to make it really tight around the paint stick everywhere that I have a dot. You just need to give it a couple of tight twists to keep it nice and tight. And here you can see it as I turn it over and let you see the side. Now I'm going to turn it on the back and I'm going to place one of my heavy duty staples right in the center of each of the ties just to further secure them to my board here. And then I take a little hot glue and I'm going to place it right on top of those staples and that also serves to keep it from sliding around on my table. I'm going to take this beautiful natural colored snowball mesh and I pulled it across my table. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and cut seven pieces because that's how many chenille stems we have at 20 inches wide. Just keep pulling it across and if you need to, you can weight it down. But this snowball mesh is really very thick and it works a lot like fabric. Now I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to fold it towards the center. I'm going to overlap those raw edges and then gather it in the middle. Just going to kind of pleat it in my hand till it looks much like a butterfly. And then I bring it over to my chenille stems and I'm going to give it a couple of hard twists and a little fluffing. And that's all we're going to do. Let me show you again, kind of in real time. I'm folding it over, covering up the raw edges, gathering it in the middle, arrange it in the shape of a butterfly, and then bring it over to my chenille stems and give it a couple of hard twists. And that's pretty much it. We're going to do the exact same thing for the rest of our chenille stems. 
and you don't have to worry about any spaces that are showing right now on our stick there between our chenille stems. Eventually, with all of the things we're going to put into this centerpiece, none of that will even show. Right now, we're just getting a good base onto the paint stick. And there's how it looks so far. Now I'm going to cut my five and a half inch orange mesh. I'm going to cut pieces that are 10 inches long. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I just weight it down as I need to. And I just continue to cut those 10 inch pieces. I end up needing 14 of the 10 inch pieces. I'm going to take my orange mesh and I'm going to roll it into a curl and I bring it over to my centerpiece and I'm going to twist one down into my chenille stems. And that's when I decided I needed two for each piece. And so then I take the second one and then I'll roll that up as well. And then I'm going to crisscross it like in the next and place it down into my chenille stem. And that's what I'm going to do for all of my chenille stems. So we will have seven sets of two. But before I did that, I decided I would go ahead and roll all of my pieces and put two of them together on a clip. Kind of like an assembly line. I just kind of work better that way. You can do it just one at the time if you want to. But I like to take mine and clip them all together so that when I start putting them into my centerpiece, I'm doing the same thing over and over. And now it's time to place all of the orange mesh into our centerpiece. Just give them a good crossing like an X and twist them down into the chenille stems and do that seven times. And I should have told you to place the raw edges downward and that just keeps the mesh from unraveling and sticking up. And there it is so far. Now it's time to cut some ribbon tails. I'm going to be using this little 12 inch board that I made to help me measure my ribbon. I'm just going to hold it at one end and then start wrapping it around my board until I get it around six times. And once I do that, I'm going to cut off the end first of all, and then I'll start sliding it off of the board. That does take a little bit of time if you get it really tight. And then once I do that, I'll just clip the ends and I have all six pieces cut at one time. And the next thing I do is cut six pieces of the ribbon that's two and a half inches wide and has leaves on it. Same procedure, so I get my six pieces easily. And after that, I'm going to take a little time and I'm going to fold all of my pieces of ribbon in the middle with the right sides on the inside. Again, I work best when I use an assembly line method. And then I'm going to fold those open ends of my ribbon and cut an angle from the center to the outer edge and dovetail those ends. It's much easier to do it ahead of time than after you put it down into the centerpiece. Always cut from the center down to the edge. And there's all of our pieces. Now it's time to place them into the centerpiece. I always put the leaves down first then my second ribbon, I place them at an X, down into the chenille stems, and give it a couple of tight twists. And then once you do that, you want to fluff those ends of ribbons. Because it's wired, you just kind of pull up under the middle and fluff it out, and it looks so professional. And then we're going to do the same thing. I didn't do it here, but what you want to make sure you do is the same ribbon that you put up on the left-hand side you want to do that each time the same way. And I also made sure once I turned it around, I faced my trucks out to the edge on the opposite end. Well, on both ends actually. But I faced the truck to the outer edge each time. We don't have to put one in the middle because we're going to make a big bow for that middle piece. So I'm going to start out with about eight inch tails and about four and a half inch wide loops, maybe five inches on this bottom one, starting out with this orange burlap type ribbon. And you will see here in a minute, I'm going to place one loop up and one tail down and then one loop down and one tail up. Basically in opposite directions. 
Then I come in with my second ribbon and I'm going to use this leaf ribbon. I only had a little bit left, but it actually worked out perfectly. I folded it in the middle, placed it down in my pegs, and then just folded in the sides. And that was all I had left on the roll. And then I'm taking this yellow ribbon that's one and a half inches wide and I'm going to do two loops on each side and one tail on each side. And of course, one tail is up and one tail is down. And then I come in with my last ribbon and I'm also going to do four loops. They're a little smaller than the ones beneath it. And I make sure that I have two loops on each side and a tail up and a tail down. And then I'm going to take this zip tie, place it around my bow, place a chenille stem inside, pull it tight and cut off that excess. And then what do we have to do? We have to fluff and we have to trim those ends. We have to dovetail the ends. There is a lot of work to making a bow, but it is so satisfying when you see it come together. And even when I place it down into my centerpiece, it will require another fluffing. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go in and take those center chenille stems and I'm going to turn them around my pencil, just kind of twisting them around, making loops. And then I'll just push it down into my centerpiece to hide it and then bring over my bow and I'm going to place it and tie it right around the stick with the chenille stem that I made it with. And that's a good basis for our centerpiece. Now I'm going to cut my mesh tubing. I need six pieces that are 20 inches long. Then I'm going to take it and fold it in the middle and just make a very simple bow by bringing in the edges and twisting it down into my chenille stems. And once I finish that, I'm going to again curl it around my pencil and shove it down into our centerpiece. I'm not going to cut them off because I'm going to use that to attach some of my items. And again, let's go through and put the rest of our mesh tubing into our centerpiece. Every item you add makes your centerpiece more full and more luxurious. I like to do this at the end of the season when I've made all of my projects and I try to use up my leftover mesh, my leftover mesh tubing, leftover ribbon, all of the things from the fall projects that just happen to have a little bit left of. And there's what we have so far. And now I'm going to use my florals into my piece. I'm just going to push this leaves down toward the bloom and we'll just clip those off with our wire cutters. Again, I'm throwing everything I've got left from this season into this piece. Then I'm using the mesh to hold my pieces and also the tubing and whatever holds it down to this centerpiece. I also use the chenille stems to kind of twist it down in there and anything that feels a little loose, I'll just use a little hot glue to tack that down as well. And so I'm placing in first these sunflowers on each side. Now I'm placing in some pomegranates. I wish you could tell how pretty they are on camera. In person, they are much prettier. They just scream fall. And I'm putting about three pieces on each end. Then I'm taking these little pumpkins and they're styrofoam. So I'm taking a little skewer and I push it right down the center from the bottom. Use a little hot glue to make sure it stays in place. And after I get both of them done, I'm taking my wire cutters and I'm cutting it at an angle. Maybe about four inches from the bottom. And then we'll bring those over and just place them down into our centerpiece where we think they look good. I'm not a florist, but I do love poking posies, y'all. When you finish this centerpiece, it's about 27 inches long. It makes quite the statement piece. Now I'm going to bring in these little miniature mums. They're in a beautiful orange color, and I'm just going to place, oh, about four cuttings, two on each end. And that kind of finishes out our piece. I think my Thanksgiving table is going to be a big hit this year. Happy fall, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. 
For this project, I'm going to use this wood acorn cutout that I got from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint, I only ended up using the truffle, some pine cones that I picked up from my yard and baked in the oven at 250 degrees for 45 minutes, this stocking footy from the Dollar Tree, some batting or anything for stuffing, some twine, some fall florals from the Dollar Tree that I had left over from other projects, a mop head from the Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So I removed that twine hanger and I did fill in that hole. You can use anything to fill this in. I use some of the caulking from the Dollar Tree, but you could use spackling. You can even use hot glue to fill it in. Then I just gave my acorn a really good coat of paint. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I painted the front and the back and left it to dry. Now we're going to take that mop head and I'm going to pull out several of those strings. These come out really easily. Then I kind of unravel one end of them and I glue it down to the base of the cap of the acorn. I'm going to go all the way across this and it does kind of go at an angle so kind of watch how it goes around. It looks just like a regular acorn. When I get to those sides I unravel one and then I glue down one strand because I am going to make this form to the acorn. I want it to still look like an acorn. We're just going to keep going all the way across. I trim off at the bottom of this so that I can use the bottom as well because these are long enough to use both strands and I just fill it in. Now we're going to unravel everything and this does take a minute. You have to be careful because these are kind of fragile. They will break apart but if they do just put a little bit of hot glue on it and glue it right back up at the top. I love how wavy these are and how it kind of fills everything in. Once I get them all unraveled, I'm going to flip them up and I take my Mod Podge and I fill in my whole acorn and then I put it back down on top of it and press it down. This helps it to form to my acorn. I filled in a few of the areas, but I wasn't really concerned about having a few holes there. I think this wavy part makes it look kind of like a real beard. Now we'll just trim it off around our acorn and we have our beard. We're going to take those pine cones and start taking those little pieces off and I'm not going to lie these were some prickly pine cones. They got my fingers several times I probably should have had on gloves. Baking them in the oven though will do two things. It kills any bugs that are inside of them and it opens it up some. This was really tightly formed so I needed it to open up some. After I got a good amount off, I take my hot glue and I start gluing them in a line right along the base of that cap. I want to cover up all of those mop head hairs and make it look finished. Now we're going to take that footy and I cut a piece of it off and I take a piece of my batting and stick in there and then I kind of form it into a ball and wrap a rubber band around the back of it. We'll trim off those ends and we have a nose. I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue it right there, right up against those pine cone pieces. Now we'll continue to build this. I just keep layering them on, going up and up. And since this is the way they are naturally in nature, they go on really easily. Once I get to the top, I want to cover the woody part of those pine cones. So then I start taking the smaller pieces and I cut off that prickly part and I just go right around that edge and fill it in. And this gives it a beautiful finished look. Now let's decorate. I'm going to take this fall leaf that I had left over from my other projects and glue it right there at the base of my stem. And then we'll use some of these orange berry things. And I had these two cool looking acorns. They came on a pick from the Dollar Tree. So I glued those right down there. And I think I do end up putting a little bit of that moss in there as well. To make a hanger for this, I'm going to use a piece of twine. I fold it in half and tie a knot. That leaves a loop. And then I flood it with hot glue and cover it with paper tape. This really secures it. To camouflage it, I'm going to put a little more of my truffle paint over that and we will be finished.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this candle holder that I got at the thrift store, some Waverly chalk paint in ivory, and some gold metallic acrylic paint from Crafter's Closet, two pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, some floral foam, some fall florals from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So, when I saw this candle holder, I fell in love with it. Y'all know I am a sucker for anything that has a lot of detail, and this had a ton of it. Now, I wasn't crazy about the color. It just really did not suit my style, but I knew that if we gave this a coat of paint and then did some distressing, it was really going to make it pop and give it a fresh new look. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I gave this a really heavy coat. But I make sure that I use that brush and kind of go around in that detail so that it doesn't pull up and become a gloppy mess. Once I get my coat and a half because I put a good coat and then did some touch up, I left it to dry. I'm also going to paint this pumpkin. Y'all know if you've been around that I do not like this orange color of these carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree but with a coat of paint you can make this fresh. I knew I wanted to use that gold metallic paint on this and it wouldn't hold up to that bright orange color but by putting a coat of ivory paint on there it's really going to make it pop. Once that ivory paint had dried, I took my gold paint and I started off just going in those ridges, but then I ended up kind of going over the bumps as well, kind of lightly, but you know, going over them anyway, because I just really loved the way this was looking. Once I got a lot of that gold paint on there, I ended up coming back in while it was still wet with my other brush that had the ivory paint on it. And this started blending together and it became like this creamy gold, almost like a sherbet color. Now our candlestick is dry, so I took a piece of that sandpaper that comes from the Dollar Tree. This is a really fine grit and I start going over this, making sure that I get those edges and over that detail so that it pops out. I just love this look. I think it makes it look so vintage and so aged, and it always amazes me how a little paint and a little distressing can make these things look. Now we're gonna take some floral foam and I cut it at an angle and put it on my candlestick, and then I cut off those edges so that it fits. I am going to use a little bit of hot glue on here, but it doesn't stick real well, so it's easy to change out. I'm going to take a piece of the skewer and stick it up in my pumpkin and stick it down into that styrofoam to help hold it there. And now we're going to change the angle so you can see what I'm doing. I take that other little felt or velvet pumpkin and I glue on top of this. I love these being at an angle. And we're going to take our fall florals and cut them apart and just start sticking them around the base of our pumpkin. I always end up with a lot of these fall florals from the Dollar Tree. I just love the way they look and the colors. So when I'm in the store, I have a tendency to just keep picking them up every time I go in. And this is a great way of using them. It's a different use for a candlestick. It takes your topiary and raises it. And then when you add these florals in at the bottom, it just gives it such a rich look. I love this. We're just going to keep poking these in. I cut them apart and I stick them in. And once you get a full look and you're happy with it, this project is finished. hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursday, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!